Welcome to Celebrity Masterclass, Screen Actors Guild Foundation. My name is Paul Ryan, and I'm thrilled to be here because we had a great, great night ahead for us. We have a true movie star here tonight. And I was thinking this afternoon, if I looked in the dictionary, what would I find under the word movie star? So I went out and got a, uh, a dictionary. <laughs> And I looked under, looked under Movie Star, and what did I find? A picture of Burt Reynolds. A picture, a picture of Burt. Even Webster knew, even Webster knew. He's given us so many wonderful performances, The Longest Yard, Starting Over, Deliverance, Boogie Nights, for which he was nominated for an Academy Award, won the Golden Globe, Cannibal One, Cannibal Two, we had Smoking the Bandit 1, Smoking the Bandit 2. He does it all. He's a true movie star, and uh, he loves, loves actors. So put your hands together. Give him a big SAG Foundation welcome. A celebrity masterclass welcome, Mr. Burt Reynolds. How are you, Burt? Good to see you, Mr. Steenie. A real joy and a pleasure. Thank you. Uh, I was very big in the 70s. <laughs> and if you have any questions uh, about that period, I think I probably was the only actor you've ever had here that had black and white film. <laughs> <laughs> there were some others. There were others? There were others. I don't know if you saw the, the definition of movie star in the dictionary. Did you yes. see that, Bert? That's pretty amazing. I, I, I uh, spent... Uh, almost a year of my life putting those pacing those <laughs> in there. Uh, did a great job. Thank you. An amazing job. I'm so happy that, that Dom is here yes. and stealing all the land. <laughs> you worked with him uh, a couple of times, I believe? I, I, every chance I get. Yeah. Plus I make him make dinner <laughs> on the weekends. But... Uh, I, I can't tell you uh, the number of times that uh, I, I've had uh, laugh so hard that I, I just had to, we had to rap, you know? <laughs> That's a rap, you know, because I was gone. And when I, when I, 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 I laugh, uh, unfortunately, I, I, I sound like Ema Sumac. I mean, it's, 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 it's a way, high way, note. A high note, yeah. high, very, very high. It's, it's not very masculine at all. <laughs> Sean Connery couldn't have that laugh. No. And, and, uh, but but I, I, uh, I love Dom, and, and uh, he's, the, he, he makes me laugh, uh, well, he's made me laugh in some of the most incredible places. Uh, he, he's, he's the most funny when he's petrified. Mm. <laughs> and uh, we once, uh, we went on a, uh, well, one time he was on a, a diet uh, because they said, you're going to die. And, uh, and he had to go on a diet, and he, he, he was really good. We went out to dinner, and he had salad and nothing. And then, uh, and, and then we went to the room, it was in Vegas. My room was across from his room, and it was about 3 o'clock in the morning. And I, and I, 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 I heard uh, uh, this commotion in the hallway. And I, I opened the door, and there was a line of waiters. <laughs> Uh, you know, to, to 20, 25 waiters with, with trays and, and, and he opened the door and he saw me and said wrong room <laughs> uh, didn't, didn't want me to nail him and then another time he, uh, we, we, were, uh, we went on this cruise uh, it was a, a Charlie Durning and myself and, and uh, Elizabeth Ashley. Do you know Elizabeth Ashley? Oh, for Evening Shade and a phenomenal actress. A phenomenal actress. Yes, Agnes uh, of God on Broadway. Yeah, a deeper voice than Aldo Ray. Mm. <laughs> you got a big contrast between Aldo Ray and Ema Sumac. Ema Sumac, there's a big range. contrast there. And, and uh, uh, she, uh, 
she was on the trip too, and and was we uh, we hadn't left the dock, and she was stoned, <laughs> and, and, and uh, we had to keep her under control, mm -hmm. you know. So I assigned Dom to her, <laughs> which was not a good thing. And and and. Uh, she may have had the munchies. Well, well it, the, the, the problem was that when we, when we were coming back into the, uh, the States, uh, she said to me, we were just about to land, and she said, I've got something in my bag. And I went, I've got something in my bag that could, you know, we could get, you know, busted for. We could get busted for the. the, the, the <laughs> do you realize this is this is my hometown? I mean, I, I went to high school with these these people that work here. I mean, how could you do this? I mean, uh, what what have you got? And 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 I, I looked in there. It was you could do a, a f two years of, <laughs> of, of, of 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 any of the late night uh, police shows mm. <laughs> and, and uh, a, a guy was kind of looking and, and, and she was flirting with him you know, I, I know I know <laughs> kind of cute boy I bet you're hung <laughs> and, uh, and and I said Dom you got to get us out of here I mean you got to get her you got to get her past the guys you know and uh he, 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 he went into his real, he does this real butch guy, you know? Mm -hmm. I'll take care of it. <laughs> and he grabbed her around the waist and he brought her right up and, 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 and walked off with her, screaming. You know? It was amazing. It was like Charles Nelson Riley going, Chuck, Chuck Riley. <laughs> My, 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 fa my father once said, if you ever bring any of them queers around here, I'm going to shoot them and make a carpet for your mother. And I said, well, uh, Dad, I, 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 I don't know what you're talking about. And, and uh, so when he met my father, he went, Chuck Riley. Okay. And, 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 and Charles is 6'4", you know. And, uh, and, uh, and Charles said, smoking a pipe? And my dad said, yeah. And he said, what kind of tobacco you got? And he said, the kind of, I, I get this down on the coast there. It's uh, sweet, it's very sweet. Uh, honeybee, honeybee, that, that's honeybee, that's right. About that time, a guy walked by. I had Arabians, and a guy walked by who would be played by Brad Pitt. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, 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 and he was leading my lead stud uh, of the ranch. And uh, my father said, that's the stud of the ranch right there. And uh, we breed him about 35 times a week. We get $25,000 every pop. And Charles said, well, the horse isn't bad either. <laughs> Strangest thing is that my we we, we as actors uh, uh, are in a business that I'm so proud of the fact that we judge only talent and we don't judge anything else. We don't judge what uh, what, what you look like, uh, what your sexual preference, what your color, what, whatever, and, and I, I'm terribly proud of that. And, and uh, I, 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 I wanted, I, I don't know why I was, I was born in the South, I was raised in the South. I don't know why I was like this, but I, I was. My father was the chief police, which made it very difficult. Same name as you. Same name as me. He was Big Bert. <laughs> and, uh, and they called you buddy. 
They called you Buddy to make well, it easy. Well, I preferred that to Little Bert. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and, and, and uh, he, uh, he arrested me twice. <laughs> And uh, uh, came in and said, hey, your father's here, you can go home, your father's here, you can go home. And he looked right at me and said, your father didn't show up. <laughs> and and, and I, I was, it was, a, it was a tough, tough love. It was a very tough love. And, and, and I, 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 I we, we didn't hug, you know, and I'm, they, they, I, some people would call it the Burt Reynolds hug, but I, 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 I do, uh, it, I, I, I've got Italian somewhere in me, and, and I, I just I, I love people, and and uh, and speci especially people in our business who have uh, I get the hell beat out of them, and, and, and it, it's a tough tough racket. And uh, I, I remember that uh, he. My dad used to say, does he work or, or does he do what you do? He's an actor, dad. And, and he, he never quite got it. But the interesting thing is that he lived to be 96. And his two best friends were Ossie Davis when Charles knows mm. Wow. Came full circle. Well, let's talk about Buddy, Buddy Lee, because your childhood was so different because there was no preparation really for acting because I love this story. When you were in, uh, I think it was junior high school, you were called a mullet. Mm -hmm. And there was a big race, Peanut, Dick Hauser, the baseball player, well, well, dared you to, Dick, to Dick race. Hauser, well, Dick Hauser is one of those guys in, in school that if he named you when you were 75, your name was Booger. Because <laughs> he named you Booger, you know. And, and people were petrified that he'd name you, you know. And, and, and I used to hide, you know, because I was afraid. And I, and I was from this little town, Rivera. Uh, which was a fishing community. And it wasn't until I was 40 that I found out it was Riviera. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, uh, I, I <laughs> sophisticated. And, and uh, we, we, uh, we got in trouble all, all the time. And uh, I used to sit on one side of the uh, street uh, and before school. That's where all the, uh, you know, grease balls were. With them. We had our little Harleys and 35 pounds of grease in the back of our hair. And, and, uh, and, and, and on the other side were the guys with the letters, you know. A lot of letters and a lot of girls. And, and you and wanted to be on that side. I, I thought, this doesn't seem right. Uh, and, and so uh, uh, Dick Hauser, who later became the manager of the New York Yankees and the manager of Kansas City uh, and won, won the World Series. Uh, uh, Peanut, they called him Peanut, and he, he, he went like this, and I, uh, and, and so I went over and said yes, and he said, I hear you're pretty fast. And I went, well, I, I don't know, I, I guess so. I said, can you beat Vernon Rolison? And I, I thought, well, I, I, I don't know. I, I think so. And uh, suddenly there was a crowd there, like Gandhi. I mean, there was hundreds of people. And he said, why don't we raise? And I said, oh, oh, all right. And he said, flash. Now, there's a lot of stupid things you, you can do in your life, but don't race a guy named Flash. <laughs> We start walking down to the, the football field, and I, uh, I noticed that Vernon Rawlson had a pair of track shoes in his back pocket. I'd, I'd never seen track shoes. I didn't know what they were. They looked like little spikes, and, and I, 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 uh, I always ran barefooted. And we got to the football field, and 100 yards when you're 14 is a long ways. And I knew that if I lost that race, mm -hmm. 
I'd be mullet mm -hmm. for the rest of my life. Yeah, not pretty. No. And, and, and Vernon Rawlson, uh, I remember um, Hauser said, on your mark, and Vernon Rawlson said, and I went, you know, I had, I had never had any training of any, any kind, and I was from Rivera. And, 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 uh, and he said, go. And I, I can hear that sound. I'll hear that sound the rest of my life of his spikes in the grass. <laughs> and my little bare feet. <laughs> but I won. I, I, won the ra I won the race. And, and it, was, it was a great lesson for me because that's what you have to do. That's what you got to do. You got you to dig down and get something you ain't got. Vernon Rawlson, on 99% on of the time, would beat me. But not that day, because I wasn't going to be mullet. <laughs> and, and when you want that part, when you want that part, you got to dig down. You got to go get something that you ain't used before. You gotta find a part of yourself that uh, people say, well, you, 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 you just, uh, you know, your problem is you, you, you're, you're funny and wonderful at a party, but you're not funny and wonderful. At, you, you don't know how to do comedy uh, at a reading. I mean, if George Hamilton, if George Hamilton was as funny on screen as he is at a house, he'd be <laughs> Cary Grant. <laughs> George Hamilton, who I love, I love George Hamilton because he has the greatest sense of humor in the world. And he's absolutely marvelous, absolutely wonderful, absolutely wonderful, wonderful man in Palm Beach, at Palm Beach where I went to, and, and, and I dated a girl from Palm Beach. And my first date was with a girl in Palm Beach. And, and I, I, I drove up and they, uh, uh, the, the, the voice came over and said, yeah, and I said, uh, this is uh, Buddy Reynolds, and I'm here to pick up Mary Alice. And the voice said, go to the back of the house, to the <laughs> service entrance. <laughs> and I s heard my voice say, because I was kind of a smart ass, you know. I was a, I, I, my son is here, who is the, the best gentleman. He's such a gentleman. I don't know where he got his mother. His mother did a fantastic job. But I said, well, that's all right. That's, that's what I had in mind anyway. <laughs> and, 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 and then she said, you come to the front door. <laughs> and, and, and I went to the front door, and there was Mrs. Robinson, you know. Hi. Hi. <laughs> And, and, and then Mary Alice uh, came out, and, and then Mary Alice's mother went, Mary Alice, you go out, have fun. Uh, Buddy and I are going to play checkers. <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, it was my introduction to uh, the Palm Beach society and, and also the fact that people behind those big walls that we all wanted to get behind, we were so bored and unhappy. And, and, and they were right out of, you know, you know, life follows monogram movies. We, we, we don't, uh, we don't uh, look at life and, and make a, a movie about it. Life looks at uh, movies and they go, oh, I see, you, you take the old, older woman in Palm Beach and she's dancing with Ricardo Moldovan. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you take the same, you know, it's the same in reverse with the other. other and and it, you, you think, this, this can't be real, but it is real. I mean, it is real in Palm Beach. It's the last, they're so proud of the fact that they're the last anti-Semitic island. <laughs> In, in, in the world, right? they, they, they think that they, they, they're just swell. 
It makes them so happy to, to, to have that. They, they don't have any African-American help, just Jews. <laughs> You know, they, they, they have, they have, a, they actually have a Jewish gardener. Really? No, no. There's, not, that's, you know, there's Japanese gardeners in everywhere in the world, but palm. <laughs> Didn't know that. No, no. Let me ask you a question. Because you came from a lower middle class family near Palm Beach, did you want to be? Was that like sort of the goal? Was that like? I thought I did. You thought you did. I thought I did. I really did. I thought someday. I'll get me a house with a great big wall, and, and I'll, I'll find out what happens back there. And Were you disappointed? Nothing happens back there. <laughs> Absolutely nothing happens back there. And, and, and not only that, but it, it, it's, it's, it's so uh, expensive, you know. I mean, it's, it's unbelievable uh, what it, it costs, you know. Uh, just to, I would go away. I had this man that worked for me, Harry. He was a wonderful guy and, and, and uh, great fun. And Harry would have a party while I was gone. <laughs> you know, boss, just so your friends would have fun. Thirty thousand dollars, the, the party. Wow. Yeah, just just uh, just a little party. Chasen's, you know, catering. <laughs> And, 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 How did and you find out? I'd find out. I'd, how did I find out? I would, holy shit. <laughs> what, what is this, Harry? And he said, well, we had a little party, boss. I thought you'd, thought you'd want to ask, you know, these people, they're all your friends. And, you know, and we had uh, Jason's catered it. And it was, it was a fabulous, fabulous party. <laughs> Went on until four in the morning. And it was just great. I said, well, I'm so happy. But you had a, a good time. I, I never did have any of those parties there. I, the only parties that I had, I had parties, and they don't have them now. They don't have them now. I don't, I don't know why uh, uh, actors today, we were so close uh, when I was starting out because we were all starving and we were all uh, 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 telling each other where the jobs were, you know. I didn't get this job, but you'd be great for it. Nobody does that anymore. Rip Torn was your roommate. Rip, Rip Torn was my roommate, which it, it, in itself it, is amazing. <laughs> uh, because Rip, Rip, Rip. Uh, uh, was that his real name, Rip? No, no Rip, uh, his real name is Elmore. El Elmore Torn, which is why his name is Rip. <laughs> and and he, uh, he, he was incredible. And, but, he, but he, he was the best actor, I swear to you, he was the best actor of all of us. And it would always end up being Robert Redford, George Kripart, Steve McQueen, myself, and Rip, Rip Torn, George Maharis. And it was down to us, you know. And we'd all know Rip Torn was going to get the part. Because Rip Torn was the best actor. He was the best of all of us. But I knew something they didn't know. He was going to get fired. <laughs> because he, he, he just, he had the most self-destructive uh, thing about him. And, and I, so I would cue him. Can I cue him that? Really? And I'd learn every line. <laughs> So uh, about the third day, Rip would say, mm, "Some bitches fired my dad. I tell you, they don't, them, uh, they don't know what the hell they're doing. I had this part. I got it cold, man. I got it cold." <laughs> and I said, uh, "So I would, you know, have Monique James was our agent. I would say, would you call them and tell them that you have another actor who knows every line." <laughs> I know the show is on tomorrow night. And so I got, I got uh, my first show that I did uh, was Robert Montgomery Presents with James Cagney. Was mm. the this is man. his room. This is the James Cagney room. And well, it should be. <laughs> I, 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 he, he is, he is, 
Really, I mean, if, if that man is not uh, uh, the most, in, the energy that he has as an actor, how dare you be lazy as actors and look at James Cagney. I mean, how dare you? His, his, he, he, he can stand still and, and, and uh, uh, just bury you. His, his, his intensity. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> really, yeah. And, and I had a very August, awful thing happen. I, 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 I collect paintings by actors who mm. paint. And I've got some wonderful paintings. Uh, you paint Fine. yourself. I, I paint, well, I paint myself, actually. I have a Henry Fonda painting, and, and I, I wanted a James Cagney painting so bad, because he's so good, and, and so I, uh, he had said something wonderful about me in a magazine, and so I, I got his phone number, and I called, uh, and I said, uh, uh, Mrs. Cagney answered, and I said, this is Burt Reynolds, and I was wondering if I could talk to Mr. Cagney, and she said, Jimmy, it's Burt Reynolds. And he went, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he, just said, well, he wants to, to, to talk to you. And he went, mm, uh, okay. And he said, yeah. And I went, Mr. Kegg, I want to thank you for what you said about me in that interview. And, and the, the things you said were so, uh, I mean, I, you're my favorite actor. And I, 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 I don't know what to say. And I was wondering if I could have a picture. And there was a long pause. I thought it was a little long. <laughs> and then he went, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then a month later, a pain came, mm. said Paris in the Rain mm -hmm. by James Keg. Mm. Wow. He thought I wanted a pain. <laughs> And so I, I was so I was so embarrassed that I called back to tell him that I didn't want to paint. And I, I said, uh, uh, "Mrs. Cagney, can I talk to Mr. Cagney? Uh, this is Burt Reynolds." And she said, "Jimmy, it, it's Burt Reynolds." And he said, "Tell that cheap son of a bitch you can't have another painting." <laughs> But, but getting back to the, 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 the parties that we, we had, at, at, at my house on a Saturday night would be, we'd play charades. Is this Florida or here? Here, mm -hmm. and, and I swear to you that I'm not, may, may lightning strike me and Jimmy right here, that this was the group. We, Betty Davis, uh, Esther Williams, uh, Betty White. Or, or, yeah, well, I'm doing the women now. So. <laughs> you, you, you've always had a problem mixing up those two sections. I'm, I'm doing the women now. And, and, uh, well, since we're in Orson, was it Orson Welles or Orson Bean? No, it was Orson Welles. Welles, okay. And, and, and I, I remember we, were, we, we always played charades, and, and uh, Orson Welles was there. And it started out, you know, it always started out, Mr. Welles, Mr. Welles, Mr. Welles, Mr. Welles, Mr. Davis, Mr. Davis. But as the game got, you know, you get, you know, so actors are competitive, you know? And so after about three hours, it was, Orson, you fat shit! Get the barrel! Get the barrel! Get the barrel! Get the barrel! No. Uh, we, 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 just, we, we were infuriated that he couldn't get it, you know? And, and, uh, and Esther came over to me and said, could I meet Betty Davis? And I said, you don't know Betty Davis? I mean, that's incredible. And I said, no, I was under contract 
to MGM, mm -hmm. and she was under contract at Warner Bros. Well, see, in those days, they never met, and mm -hmm. it, it's hard to believe, yeah. but they actually, you know, like Kate, never went into Valley. <laughs> Still doesn't. She's never been in the valley in her life. She says, no, I can't go there. It's in the valley. There's an altitude shift. Said, no, no, it's just, it's, I can't, I couldn't go there. So, so I, I said, uh, she said, could I meet Betty Davis? And I said, uh, yeah. And I thought, oh, God, I, I hope Betty's in a good, good mood. You know? <laughs> and she never knew when Betty was in a good mood. And, and, and I, I went over and I said, um, and Esther is big, you know. I went, uh, Betty, uh, this is this is Esther Esther Williams, and and Be Betty went. <laughs> and, and Esther went. I think you're the greatest actress that ever lived. And Betty went. <laughs> Thank God Esther has a fantastic sense of humor. <laughs> and it was all right. I mean, it was, it was okay. I mean, it, 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 it was all right. That, that, that what did she... Betty Davis say when Joan Crawford died? Well, they, they hated each other. They truly did hate each other. And, and, uh, and the crew, uh, no matter bet, uh, what you read, the crew loved Betty, and uh, they, they, they gave respect to Miss Davis, I mean, Miss, Miss Crawford, and Miss, Miss Crawford, and Miss Crawford, Miss Crawford, but, but they, Betty was, a, you know, she'd pick up a lamp and carry, you know, and, uh, and, and, she, and I, uh, I, I got to know her so well that uh, we, we just got silly with each other, we made each other laugh and everything. So she would have me pick her up and take her to these parties. And the day that I was to take her to this party at Bob Aldridge's house, uh, uh, I, uh, I called her up and she said, look, I, I, I'm going to be late. So just go, I'll, I'll see you there. I went, oh, okay. And, uh, and that afternoon, Joan Crawford died. So the place, there were 150 people there. And, and uh, I was way in the back, like I always am, way, way, way in the back, you know. Because I'd rather be shot in the foot than be <laughs> at, at one of these things. And I'm way in the back, and I'm talking to uh, the man who writes for Sex in the Cinema in Playboy magazine. Uh, you probably know who I'm in. He's a, a pretty good writer. And, and uh, Betty came in, and the waves parted, you know. Mm. It's only that big, but people just And she walked up to me. Now, Austin, Quentin, I'm going to say a bad word, so just... <laughs> uh, she came up to me, and she went... I'll, I'll say a different word, but it rhymes. <laughs> it rhymes with that. She said, "Well, the punk died today." <laughs> and I said, uh, "Betty, I don't think you know um, uh, this is, uh, man writes for Sex in the Cinema in Playboy magazine." And Betty said, but she was always on time. <laughs> you, have an am you have an amazing gift for incredible dead-on impersonations. Wow. No, I, I don't, I'm not, I'm not, I don't have that. The only way to learn an impersonation is not from the subject matter. 
it's from somebody who does an impersonation of the subject. Mm -hmm. Because they have picked this, and, and that's how you learn them. And, and uh, my neighbor was Gregory Peck, and I'm one of the very few people that does Gregory Peck. That's why I do Gregory Peck, because <laughs> everybody does everybody else. But I, I do Gregory Peck, and, and, and I used to see him in the morning, and he'd come out to get the paper, and I'd say, good morning, Mr. Peck. And he'd say, good. <laughs> morning. Bert, <laughs> how are you? I said, well, I'd like to stay and tell you, but I've only got five hours. But I've always had a good year for uh, people who, who do uh, impersonations of other people. And, uh, and it's important to have a good year if you're an actor, only because you're gonna, you're gonna get a shot at. Uh, Who does you somebody. that you like, as far as impersonation of you? Uh, Will Ferrell does me pretty good, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, and he's scared to death of me. <laughs> and, you know, he's six foot nine or something, <laughs> and, and he's petrified that I'm gonna kill him. <laughs> But I, I, I really, he does make me laugh and uh, 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 when he do, does me, and he does me uh, talking to Alex Trebek. He <laughs> does both. Yes, and not knowing both. the answer to anything, <laughs> which is my image. And, um, you know, you do certain parts for so long. I mean, if you do enough, Smokies and cannonballs and things like that. You know, you you just don't get a David Nevin roll. You know, I mean, you, you're not going to get a cocktail glass. You just uh, you're going to get a Chevy, maybe. But you know, I, I mean, and I always wanted to to play uh, a, a college graduate, <laughs> uh, and I, I I've only uh, in, in It'll be in two years I'll have been acting and getting paid for it. I only count it if you get paid. And getting paid for it for 50 years. Wow. Uh, <laughs> Bernard, I want to mention, you, you talk about college. You were a big football star at Florida State. One of the great <laughs> broke records and the scouts were out from the Detroit Lions, the, uh, I think the Baltimore Colts. If something hadn't happened in your life, you probably would have gone that route. And I believe on Christmas Eve, you were driving and went into a flatbed truck, and that, yeah. that changed your career. Well, yeah, it, it changed. Uh, I, I actually should have died. It was a, a, a miracle. I, uh, they were stealing. Uh, cement blocks and they had this flat part of the truck across the road and the cab pointed this way. I was on a dirt road and I was going my usual <laughs> usual uh, seven, 70 and, 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 and uh, you sure it was 70 Bert? So I was set, start with 70 and, 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 and uh, I, the their bright lights were on, and I couldn't see beyond the bright lights. And when I saw beyond them, there was this mountain of, of cement, cement blocks. And I, I went underneath the truck, and the blocks came down on top of me and busted my spleen. And uh, They took the spleen out? Yeah, oh, they sure did. And, and uh, um, I was in there for about three hours because they didn't have the jaws of life then and and uh, the car, my car my dad had this Buick it was an old uh, 50 some Buick and uh, you know how big they were I mean they were like the Queen Mary and they're huge and uh, it was about this size 
you know, after everything brushed it down. And, and they were trying to get me out, and I remember telling the, the lieutenant, who they all knew me, and I, I uh, we'll get you out of there, buddy. Don't worry, we'll get you out of there. And uh, I'd been in there for two hours, mm. you know, and I, 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 I couldn't breathe. I knew that I, I, I had, I, uh, you know, had broken some ribs, because when I took a de breath, it hurt, but I didn't know I'd bu busted my spleen. And uh, it hadn't started bleeding yet. I mean, it hadn't, it, it coagulated. And uh, I, I, I said, don't tell my father about this. Mm. Don't tell my father? The car is this big now. <laughs> I, mean, I think he'll know something happened. Mm -hmm. and, and they got me out, and I, I, I got in the back of this ambulance with this kid I went to school with, who I knew was very religious. His name was Tommy Price. And I said, Tommy, I, I don't have a real good relationship with God right now, but if you could just talk to him I, and get me through this, I'm going to make something of myself. Just, just please talk to him. And uh, he started praying for me. And I got there, and we got to the hospital, and uh, we, had, uh, we didn't have a doctor, because none of us had ever been sick. So the only thing we had was the team doctor. And the team doctor was Dr. Fort. And he came in, and he, uh, they had me on the table. And he, he looked at me, and he said, this boy's dying, but he's, he's, he's a tough one. And he pulled off his University of Georgia ring, and, and he just, he went at me, and he got my spleen out. And uh, that was Christmas Eve, and New Year's Day, I was running on the beach, and uh, it was one of those miracles that I've had. I've had about seven of them. And, uh, Strong will. You know, you just, I think you talk about your emotions as a kid was mad and matter. I, I did. I had mad and matter because I thought I, I, I thought I, I, I can do something with my life if, if my dad would just give me an attaboy. <clears throat> you know, we, we, all, we all get directed the, uh, different ways, don't we? I mean, some of us need... Uh, a kick in the butt. And some of us need an attaboy. You've got to have an attaboy. In the South, they say you're not a man until you're, you're not a man. A man doesn't become a man until his daddy says you're a man. In the South, you're not a man until your father tells you you are. And I always wanted him to tell me I was a man, and he never did. And, uh, I, I was searching my whole life for a father figure, and uh, unfortunately, I got. I, I should have picked Jimmy Stewart. He lived right down the street. <laughs> well, I, between Gregory Peck talking slow well, Greg, and stuttering Greg, of Jimmy Greg, Stewart, Gregory talked too slow, and Jimmy. So I got Bob Mitchum. <laughs> And, 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 and Bob, Bob, Bob Mitchum was the wrong father for me. Uh, he, just, he just led me down a path that was pretty wild. And uh, I, I, I was pretty crazy. But I, I wanted a man, I wanted a man who I respected and looked up to and loved to say to me, you're, you're a man. You are a man. And it was Bob Aldridge, who's my mentor. Longest yard. Yeah, he he. I, I loved him so much. Uh, Mitch would tell me, but I couldn't understand what he said. <laughs> uh, but 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 Aldridge and I were so close. And uh, I'll never forget we we were doing this movie uh, with Catherine Deneuve. And we went to Paris to sign her, and he said, and he, uh, as only Bob could do, he said, now you sign the bitch. And 
I said, God, don't call her a bitch. She's Catherine Deneuve. I mean, she's the best actresses in the world. I mean, she's beautiful. She's a nice person. Why do you have to call her a bitch? She said, she's an actress. <laughs> I mean, I mean th there are some directors like that. And, and I'm sorry, but, but I, I loved him so much. Anyway, he, we got her to do the movie. And uh, uh, she did speak very, very little English. And uh, the picture turned out, I thought, pretty good. But it, the movie was called Hustle? The picture was called Hustle. But what happened was the word got out that I die uh, in, in the picture. And it took off, it made, first three days, it made like $30 million. And I saw Duke, I saw John Wayne, and I said, uh, he said, you got a hit. I said, yeah, it's, it's, a, uh, it's great. He said, I hear you die. I said, uh, <laughs> Yes, yeah, yeah, sir. I do. I get. I get. I get killed. And he said, "You can't die. You die." There's people that America doesn't want to die. <laughs> Me? <laughs> you. <laughs> Pictures going right in the dumper. Mm. <laughs> Because people expect they, certain things they, from they, certain they, stars. They, 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 they want a, a certain feel-good. They want a feel-good picture. With you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, it's an interesting character trait. When you were a child, there was a kid at school, Jimmy, who had a terrible home life. You brought yeah. him home yes. and said to your parents, can we house him? Can he move in here? And that's pretty incredible. And your father went upstairs, took your clothes, put it to the side, and said, he's here. That's pretty incredible. Uh, on he, both he, ends, he, on he, you he, and him. Uh, it, it speaks volumes for him. Because my mother, I said, Jimmy's going to come live with us. I, I had gone to his house. He was 11, and I was 11. And a man was beating him up. And uh, when you're 11, you know, and you've never fought a man, it's it's a different experience. And we, but the two of us together, we we, we got him. And and uh, I took him to the house, and I said to my mother, Jimmy's going to live with us. And she said, You better ask your dad. And uh, and he came home, and I I said, uh, Pop, uh, Jimmy's going to live with us. And he said. Oh, yeah? I said, yes, sir. And he, and he went upstairs, and he stuck his hand right in the middle of my closet. Shh. All my, half my clothes were over here. I said, those are Jimmy's clothes. Mm. These are yours. And he said, uh, first time you have a crossword word with him, first time you have a problem, you're out. <laughs> And Jimmy, uh, uh, we adopted him. Later, Jimmy's by. Uh, and it says uh, volumes about my father. And my father, who, who, who never gave me attaboys and never hugged me and never. When he, when he saw Quentin, I don't know why, I just jumped a whole generation. He went. <laughs> As, now, here's a kid. <laughs> What a guy. Did you wish it was you? He, he loved, he loved Quentin's. I mean, so much. Uh, I, I couldn't, I never, I never could get as close to mm. my dad as, as, as Quentin. And I don't know why it, it, it did jump a generation, but it did. And, and, uh, in hindsight, when you look back, because sometimes patterns happen in somebody's life, knowing what you know now, what do you think it was that may have caused that? with your dad and you? I, I, I'm almost positive that we knew nothing about uh, going to war and coming back so 
messed up, mm -hmm. with nobody to talk to. Mm -hmm. And Charlie Durning, I hope you have here one night, because I don't know if you all know this, but Charles Durning is the third most highly decorated soldier in World War II. Mm. The third most highly decorated. And I, he, I brought him to meet my dad, and he was talking to Charlie, and he said to me, get out. <laughs> and I said, sir? He said, get out. I said, why? And he said, you weren't there. And I, I wasn't there. And I went outside, and I'm looking in the window. <laughs> and I see the two of them, and then I see their foreheads touch. And then I see a tear come out of my dad's eye, which I'd never seen in my life. And uh, he he loved, he obviously loved Charlie, respected Charlie so much. But Charlie uh, said to me, uh, I was 15 yards from your dad at, at Normandy Beach. 15 yards mm -hmm. from him. And we knew who your dad was. I said, how'd you know who my dad was? He said, well, look at Private Ryan. If you look at the footage of Private Ryan in the beginning, there are all these boats coming up, dropping off troops in the water. But there's one that goes right up on the beach and just keeps going. Like it's a cab, you know, going <laughs> Dusseldorf. It just keeps driving and driving and so it finally stops. And what happened was my dad was a master sergeant. And this guy was dumping guys off, they were drowning. He'd go back and get a bunch and then they'd drown again because he wouldn't take them up far enough. And my dad took his gun out, stuck it in this guy's ear, and he said, take us to the beach. And the door came open and the captain got it, the first lieutenant got it, the second lieutenant got it. So my dad had four major battle, uh, you know, right there. He was promoted to captain before he hit the beach. And Charlie says, when you look at, at the footage, there's one boat that let people out that's way up on the beach. And that was your dad's. Wow. And I said, did you... Uh, did you know him from that? And he said, we'd, we'd heard of him from that. And, and, and he sa I said, why were you crying? And, he, and your dad said, will they ever forgive us for all the guys we killed, Charlie? And Charlie said, I, I don't think so. I don't think they can. Uh, it, 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 was, it was that guy who said, take me to the beach, that like the best years of our lives, I was looking out the window and a cab drove up and this man got out of the back of the cab with medals all over him and my sister, I said, let's go out. And she said, no, no, let him, let him greet mom. And, and, and he grabbed my mom and he came in and took a whole bunch of money out of his pocket. I mean, I don't know how much it was, but it seemed like thousands of dollars, it was probably about 25 or $30. And he gave it to me and he said, go, go buy some. And I didn't want to go buy anything. I wanted to hug him. Mm -hmm. And they, they wanted to be together, naturally. And I, I didn't see him that day. And I bought him an ashtray, $35 and something else. And then uh, we, we just never, 
we never connected somehow. Uh, you had strong friends always in your life, including when you were a kid, and one of your friends, Carmen Battaglia, was very instrumental in helping you make the transition from football into the arts in some way? Well, I, I had this, a bunch of guys. I was with Lee Corso yesterday. I don't know if you're watching ESPN, but Lee Corso is an amazing guy. And he played the other halfback that I played halfback with at FSU. And he was always funny and wonderful. And, and I said to Lee and Carmen Battaglia, I said, I said, what are you going to do? And I said, I'm going to go be a movie star. <laughs> I didn't say, I'm going to go out there and fall on my ass. I didn't say, I'm going to go out there and mm. try. I said, I'm going to go be a movie star. Mm -hmm. And Carmen Battaglia said, call me. <laughs> call me when you make it. And Lee said, it's going to be great, man. Parties in the pool. <laughs> fantastic. Not one guy on that team doubted that I was going to make. Not one guy. Well, there are people along the way who inspire and help people. And you had a teacher, Duncan, in English Lit and Drama, who saw something in you and cast you in Outward Bound. Yeah, I was in an English literature class, and like all football players, I was in the last row. <laughs> and and he, he, uh, he said, uh, uh, we're doing... Uh, the Romanticist period, Byron, Shelley, and Keats. And he said, uh, you back there, come down here. Hmm? Yeah. So I came down and, and sat down on my squat down on the floor, and he said, you're going to be an actor. And I said, you're out of your mind. Mm -hmm. And he said, no, you're going to be an actor. And I said, I'm not going to be an actor. I'm going to, you know, I'm gonna, my knee's going to get, I'm going to fix it, and, I'm, and then I'm going to try to play, and then I'm going to play semi pro or whatever, and then I'm going to coach and teach, but I'm not going to be an actor. I, what do I want to be an actor for? And he said, because that's what you're going to be. <laughs> and he said, I'm having readings this afternoon for outward bound. And I didn't know what the hell that meant. And so I went to the reading, and he opened the book, and he said, read right there. And I went, the guy, he said, you got it. <laughs> <laughs> and it was another guy he had done that with named Monty Markham. Monty Markham is one of our best American Shakespearean actors. We have a great teacher. Monty Markham had never acted in his life, was a total screw up. And Duncan had said, You're going to be an actor. And the same thing happened. He just had that. I called him the, the giant elf. He, he was 6'8", and, and he just was the most magnificent mm. teacher I'd ever had in my life, and, and made me fall in love with English literature. And, 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 and We never know how those people come into our life, these angels yes. who shape us and sculpt us and well, I think inspire us. Everybody in this room has had somebody tell them, bump them, just... <laughs> Just, just a little bit. You're going to be an actor. Uh, what? Mm -hmm. I mean, somebody in this room had somebody not laugh at them when they said, I think I'm going to be an actor. Somebody in this room, or the other way around, you said, I'm going to be an actor. And they said, ha! And you said, I'll shove that in mm. your ear. Mm -hmm. I'll shove that right in your ear. And it doesn't matter what the motivation, how it comes, whether it comes from uh, the negative or the positive. You've got to start the engine, negative, positive. 
And that's where it comes from, from somebody telling you you can do it, you're gonna, you're gonna be all right. Battaglia's son was a linebacker at Louisville All-America. Gorgeous, I mean gorgeous. And he said, I would like you to try to help my son be an actor. And I thought, that shouldn't be too tough. I mean, the guy's gorgeous, he's six foot four. And then he went, I thought, really think I can do it? <laughs> I, th I think I can do anything if I really set my mind to it. You know what? <laughs> what? What's the matter with you? <laughs> he said, nothing's the matter with me. I said, well, do you talk like that all the time? He said, yes, I talk like this all the time. I said, all right, here's what you're going to do. Take a bunch of rocks and put them in your mouth you're going down to the ocean tonight, and you're going to scream all night long with mm. these rocks in your mouth. And tomorrow night, we're going to put rocks in your mouth, and I'm going to give you a script, and you're going to go down, and you're going to read all night long. And in about two months, now I'm not a speech teacher, I'm not a psychiatrist, I don't know anything about that, and uh, forgive me for taking somebody's id and handling it so fragilely, I had no right to do that. Teachers have no right to do that, but I did it. Guess what? He don't, he talks just like this now. And he works all the time. Wow, thanks to you. Taking the time and the interest. Yeah, but mm -hmm. see, I, I told him, you put rocks in your mouth, you can talk. And he went, I didn't know that. <laughs> It's the Burt Reynolds School of... You just gotta, you, somebody's gotta tell you, mm -hmm. you see? That's what you do, mm -hmm. and you'll be all right. You got a scholarship from Florida State to the Hyde Park Playhouse in New York. Joanne Woodward saw you, and she was pivotal. She was pivotal in helping you. Well, I was walking across the, the I was an apprentice. At the time, I talked just like this. And I had a real, a real, real southern, real Georgia accent, so, southern Georgia. And uh, she said, would you help me with my keys? I said, ma'am, would you help me with my keys? I said, are you from the south? She said, yeah, I was born in America, Georgia. And I said, I'm way girl. She said, you're kidding me. She said, sit down here and read with me. So we were reading back and forth, back and forth. And she, uh, Wynn Hanman, who started the American Place Theater, was directing, and he walked by and she said, Wynn, Buddy is gonna play Al, and you just pay the guy that was gonna play Al. He'll be thrilled, because he gets paid, you don't have to play, you don't have to act. You don't have to pay Buddy nothing. And he'll play Al, you know. I, th I didn't know who she was, but I thought, she's important, boy. <laughs> so, uh, so I played Al, which was a great part, very funny part. Football player, teaches the guy how to walk. So, so opening night, we had, you know, standing ovation, et cetera, et cetera, and she said, I'd like you to meet my fiance. And I went, <laughs> I'd like to meet this little guy. <laughs> Beyonce, the Oz of Football Hero. And uh, well, who is this little guy? And she said, That's it. And I, I looked over and I saw the <laughs> bluest eyes I'd ever seen in my life. And I think I liked him better than Joanne. <laughs> <laughs> and, and we became really, really close friends, and she got me my agent, who was uh, Maynard Morris and uh, Moni James, and I went from there to New York and did Mr. Roberts. Mm -hmm. You played Mannion 85 bucks a week? 85 bucks a week. And Heston was in it? Yes. 
Uh, it was, it was an- You had Moses in your first Broadway show. <laughs> now, I, I, you know, you, you can't do, uh, it's, it's not right, because God love him, he, he was a, a fabulous man, and, and you can't do Charlton Heston jokes now, you know. But he, he, he was the most uncoordinated man in the world. <laughs> You couldn't hand him a pencil that he wouldn't drop it. And, and I remember opening night, we all, all of us were like this. We all ran out and we went. And, and then you saw. Because <laughs> he, could, he couldn't get out, you know. He, 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 he just, he couldn't find his way out, out, out from behind there. And, 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 and God, God love him. I mean, you know, and uh, he would say, uh, call me Chuck. You can't call him Chuck. It just wasn't, you know, he was a Charlton. He was not a Chuck. And, 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 and so one night I said to him, uh, on Mondays, we were, everybody was dark, and we, we did a show for all the theaters that were dark that came and saw your show. So it was all actors. And I said, uh, wouldn't it be funny if you said to me, who made that, uh, who made that? And I said, instead of saying Stefanowski made it in the machine shop, if I said Stanislavski made it in the machine shop, you see, because we got actors out here tonight. And they would think that was funny. <laughs> and he went. So I, somewhere it got planted back there, and we went out, and, I and he said, who made that? And I said, Stanislavski made that. And he went, I've always loved Stanislavski's work. The place went crazy. <laughs> I got this huge laugh, uh -huh. and I could see in his mind going, I've got to remember how I did that. Because <laughs> I've got, got to get that laugh every night like that. Mm -hmm. Now, I know I'm, I've, I've taken up way too much time. I just want to say a, a, a couple of things. I, I, uh, I had a theater for 14 years, and I, I, I got what they call the, the John Hausman Award, which was I, re, I, I employed um, 14,000 <laughs> 14, um, extras, actors, people, things over a period of 14 years. We did a, a play every three weeks mm. and a musical every six weeks, and we never closed. I never asked an actor to be in this play. I would say to the actor, what do you want to be in? Say to Julie Harris, what do you want to be in? She'd say, death of a salesman. I'd say, well, you're a little lightweight for Willie Loman. But if you want to play, and she said, I've always felt that Willie Loman's wife wasn't doing it with Willie. <laughs> and I said, really? I never thought about it like that. When she got to that, you know, that, the cemetery scene, I mean, uh, she tore me mm. pieces. Mm -hmm. Just tell me, please. Mr. Delaware uh, won't, he'll make some joke about this, but he's one of the best directors I've ever worked with in my life. Mm -hmm. He directed uh, lots and lots of, pl of plays at my theater and, 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 and acted in lots of shows. And uh, he's the kindest, uh, man in the world to, to people. And uh, it, it's, it's absolutely ridiculous 
that he's not in a wheelchair doing what Lionel Barrymore did and making us laugh. Why in the hell should Lionel Barrymore be able to do it because it was 75 years ago and we're not supposed to do it now? Mm -hmm. he, he is an amazing actor. He can do drama, he can do comedy, he can do anything. We need what you do in Florida. What you did in Florida, we need that here. Because there's so many actors, so many talented actors who just want to work. I want to say something about that. We have a terrible reputation for our theater here. And of course, they love it when we take a play from here to, to New York just so they can beat the hell out of it. <laughs> but I, more than that, I, I did a movie. I'm not proud of the movie. It was a lousy movie. but. I uh, couldn't understand why my two, the two be best scenes that were in the picture were cut out, and they were cut out so they could have more car chase, which is what we needed in that picture. <laughs> <laughs> and Was that they, shot, they shot these young girls. Now I know, I, I've directed, and I know how young girls, they come in, they're nervous, they're scared, they're, under 20, maybe their mom's out there, maybe not, and, and the guy says, take, take your blouse off. And, and they either cry or they take their blouse off or, or whatever. But they made a separate film. I didn't know it. Willie didn't know it. And they released it. And I didn't get any money from it. I made two movies. Uh, well, actually, I wasn't in the movie with the girl without the blouse, but they used my name to sell it. So would an actor like Tom Cruise or Tom Hanks or the old Burt Reynolds gets a few million I think it should be mandatory that we give a million dollars to SAG for lawyers to go beat the hell out of the studios yeah. and try and do that because we can't, we can't go up against, we can't go up against the, the star power that they have as lawyers. But we can if we got the money. And that's what greases the mm -hmm. wheels. And it's, 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 it's having a, a lawyers who say, you, you can't do two movies and tell the actors they're doing one movie. That's not right. Mm -hmm. that, you can't do that. And we're going to sue you. And they'll keep on suing them until they'll stop. They'll stop it. I mean, they'll stop it probably very soon because they're going to they're going to lose a lot of money on this one if, if a few lawyers get their way. But but we don't. We SAG don't have the the, the lawyers that MGM has, mm -hmm. Warner Brothers has, and you know Sony has. And if, if we had the money on a retainer for those guys, uh, because that's really what it comes down to, is, is my daddy can beat your daddy. It's my lawyer can whip your, mm -hmm. your lawyer. Bert, you've been a movie star for a long time. Has it lived up to what you thought it would be? Because a lot of people in this room would love a taste of what you've experienced. <laughs> well, probably would. Uh, I, I truthfully, I loved loved it. I loved it when I hated it. 
I loved it when I was climbing the mountain. I loved it most then. On top of the mountain, I, I, I got really goofy because I, 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 I couldn't see the bottom and I was going so fast and I, I got all messed up. And there's only one way to go. I mean, if you're number one in the world, you're, there's only one way to go. When your box office number one five years in a row, what's that feeling like? Well, I, I didn't understand it. I didn't know what it was at the time. I didn't know. Uh, I just knew that uh, uh, it was real weird that you could sit in there and, and say, uh, they'd say, well, let's do a picture about uh, a, a, a bunch of people driving cars across the country. I think that's a corny idea. Uh, I'll tell you what, if, if you can get Sinatra, Sammy, and Dean, and I got Dom, and we got, and, and, and I started naming off all these people, and they went, we can get <laughs> And I thought, there's something going on here. <laughs> Because nobody ever said that to me before. Mm -hmm. We can get them. And I, I didn't know that I had the power that I had. And I didn't use it the right way. Had I been as smart as Mr. Redford, had I been as smart as um, Mr. De Niro in terms of the press, had I been as smart as uh, a lot of uh, uh, my friend Mr. Eastwood, uh, people would think I was really intelligent. <laughs> <laughs> but I always answered the question. See, I always answered it. They'd say, or, did you go, were you, in, so, were you in Sarah Miles' room the other night? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I should have said, you know, that's none of your business, and if I tell you the answer, I'll have to kill you. you know. <laughs> I, 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 I didn't. I, I, I did. I, I lived uh, uh, what I thought was a movie star life, and I had a ball, I had a terrific time, and somewhere along the line, I learned how to act. And made it look easy. You 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 well, have a naturalness about your acting, well, that which is, is sensational. The, that is. Don't you agree with that? Uh, that is a naturalness. <laughs> I was recently watching Deliverance, and there was one particular scene. The net it starts off with Ned Beatty getting abused and whatever. And I watched what you're going to do with the body after you had done the arrow thing. And I watched the arc where you started from, you started light, and then you created a whole, a whole arc of where you went with the scene. It was just, just yeah. sensational. Well, that was, that was in one take because we had five cameras and because John Borman said, Ned Beatty won't do this twice. <laughs> And he was right. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I was proud of the, the work I did in that picture. And I, uh, I, I found a character that I knew really well and grew up with. And, and, I, and I had him. And, and I, I really had him. And, and Ned and I have done seven pictures together. And he kept saying to me, they're, they're all going to say I'm the guy who got boogered in the picture. <laughs> and I said, no, they're not. You're going to get an Academy Award now. You're going to be nominated for Are you crazy? Now, if, if he was outside right now, somebody would go, aren't you the guy who got boogered in that picture? <laughs> and and I, we were doing a film down in South Carolina, and I, and I, in my 
in, you know, my really uh, in, in intelligent uh, uh, psychiatrist mind felt that it would be important if he vented himself and went down the river. So I said, Ned, I go down the river every year just to see if I can do it. And I, I, I don't do it in a canoe, but I do it in rubber wrap. And if you went down that, I think we would get rid of those demons. And he said, really? I said, I'm telling you, I know what I'm talking about. So he said, OK. So now they have what they, nobody went down that river before that movie. Nobody. Now they go down every 45 minutes. It's called the Deliverance Syndrome. You have little t-shirts, the Deliverance thing. So we get in this rubber raft, and he's in, he's in there, and he said, are you sure this? I'm telling you, this is to get rid of this stuff. And we go down the river, and the guide forgets we were in the movie. And he goes, right down here is where John Voigt climbed up well, we call it Voight Batten now. <laughs> he climbs up, he climbed right up that rock right there. He did it himself. By God, he did. And he fell, and the crew caught him. Saved his life. They did. <laughs> now, we're going down here. We're going to come on around. Then we'll be coming up. We'll be coming up to what we call, I don't know. He's going to say something about, I've got to do, uh, are we going to stop for lunch? <laughs> and he said, yes, we, we will be stopping uh, at, it's now called, <laughs> do you remember the name of, of, the, of the river? And I was wrong. Orson Welles, I don't know. <laughs> Don, we've moved on past Orson. <laughs> it's in the map of Georgia. It's actually in the map of Georgia where it's a. a, a huh? No, the Kalahunchi, that was in the other river, but the part where we shot the scene is, is called the medical word for male intercourse. Salami? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> now, I, I ask him a lot of intelligent questions. <laughs> He, he could have been bright, he could have been bright, but jumped right on Sodom. <laughs> anyway, it's right in the map. It says Sodomy Creek. <laughs> and Ned went, this is Ned now, who I, I'm straightening out his life. Yes. I said, well, you want to get out and have some lunch? No. <laughs> he, he wouldn't get out of the boat. He wouldn't, he wouldn't, he wouldn't, he wouldn't. That's what it's called, Sodomy Creek. Wow. And uh, it didn't help him at all. <laughs> it really, it, it, it really, it really, it really didn't help him. Uh, and and I, I thought it would. I thought it would, you know, cleanse him. Um, and, and, and an amazing thing happened with that movie. Men who were so cavalier were so cavalier, and I think they still are too cavalier. They say the, way, the word rape, and it makes me crazy. Because they don't understand what they're saying and what happens to a woman, and 
when the movie came out, men were destroyed by that picture. They were literally like crawling out of the theater. And uh, it, it, it had a eff profound effect on, on uh, men's attitude about uh, that, that kind of being overpowered of, 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 of uh, not be, being helpless and uh, losing uh, everything you think. Well, that's the way a man thinks that everybody's going to tell everybody. And people wonder why James Dickey didn't write another great book. He wrote another book. It wasn't a big book. I have a theory on this, kind of like my psychiatry theater. <laughs> no, but I have a theory on this, and that is that it really happened. Mm. And he told me, and he told John, and he told Ned, and he told Ronnie, separately, it really happened. Now, we all together went, it, it really happened. Did he tell you that, too? Yeah, he told me that, too. He told all of us. He, he was void. Mm. I met Lewis. I met me. I met Ned's character. They didn't get there in time. They didn't kill him. Wow. Had they killed him, the book would have had an ending. So he, he had no other, you know, there was no other book to write. So he wrote that as closure. He had him. Closure. Uh, yeah. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, 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 and as you know, incredible, he was an incredible teacher, great poet, great, great poet. But uh, why was there only one, one book in his head? Mm -hmm. Interesting. Do you think the, the Cosmo layout cost you the, uh, an Oscar nomination for that movie? <laughs> I think you have said that you thought that happened. Without a doubt. <laughs> I do, without a doubt. Mm -hmm. I think if you're, if you're going to do something like that and, 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 and be as silly as that, and I thought it was silly. I, I was trying to make fun of all these men who, uh, uh, you know, their wives have to come home and go out in the garage and there's all this silicone on the wall or hanging up, you know, in the refrigerator door. And they've got no way to get back. So I, I you know, Helen Gurley Brown asked me a hundred times. Finally, I said, okay, I'll do it. But I, I, I have total control over the picture and, and I, uh, I'm laughing, and I have this funny, goofy remark. And I, you know, I look silly, and I'm doing something with a bear. I don't know. And, <laughs> and, 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 uh, uh, but no one, no one thought anything was going to happen. I mean, it was a big, you know, it was mm -hmm. no big deal. I was doing The Rainmaker in Chicago, and I drove up, and there was about a thousand people there. Police everywhere. Magazine had sold for 75 bucks downtown. And they had to take me in the back. The Rainmaker uh, uh, doesn't come on stage until the end of the first act. And it was a theater in the round. And so I come in, my entrance, you know, you know, I'm back here like this, the way you come in. And it's very quiet, you know? The, the play's, for some reason, the play's not really playing that well. And then I come in, I start, I walk down the, I'm walking down the aisle, 
and a woman tackles me. <laughs> tackles me and throws me to the ground. And I'm trying to get her up the leg. And then some ushers pull her off me. Then another woman grabs me. Then I get up, I get up on, on stage and, and, and it's just, it, it, it's, it, it's horrible. And uh, uh, I, I don't know if you know Sally Field, but Sally uh, takes the, the business pretty serious and, and, and the best actresses in the world. And, uh, and, and, and so, so some woman started to step up and grab me and she just cold cocked her. <laughs> just, And I said, you're really missing out on some wonderful actors' performances by doing this. And I, please, I promise, I, if you want me to sign something, I'll sign it afterwards. I'll sign anything. But enjoy the play and enjoy these other actors and, 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 and behave yourself. And they, 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 they wouldn't. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we, uh, we, had to, we, we, we had to close. Wow. The Rainmaker closed because of the Cosmo the Rain, Center book. The Rainmaker, which is the reason I told you that story, is because of the, why I think that if you're sitting in the academy and you're looking at people and you know, that guy's good and this guy's good, but this ass, you know, Mm -hmm. It was in a magazine, and um, you know he, he's not a serious actor. He's not an actor. Have you ever felt that when you were voting? Did, would you take that into consideration? Somebody else's activities outside of their performance. Of course, I I think we've all, all of us. And if, you're, and if you tell me you didn't, you're lying. We've all done something. I'm talking about people that have made it in a certain capacity, whatever made it is. We've all made mistakes and done something we shouldn't have done. And if we get caught, uh, you get clobbered. And you... Uh, I, 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 I could name actors that I've heard stories about. I could name actors that I have seen film about back in the 30s that they did to get money, who went on to win Oscars. Mm -hmm. but those films were, in, were not as well distributed as Cosmopolitan. <laughs> and I, I, yeah, I, I, I think, yeah, it is forgivable. It is forgivable. Uh, but that's, we, we, uh, we're in this crazy business where we have to make a living and we have to, we have to sell vacuum cleaners and shoes and, cars and things and, and, and uh, uh, do stuff that, that, that put a, a red thing on our nose and go, mm -hmm. you know, and, and then you finally get a little bit further and a little bit further. The only way to learn how to act is to act. You cannot learn it in acting class. You can't learn it in acting class. I'm sorry. You can learn some things that are bad habits, shouldn't do, but they don't teach you how to get the job, do they? They won't teach you how to act, but they don't teach you how to co-read. They don't teach you how to walk into the office. They don't teach you how to make an impression they don't teach you how to, before you walk out of that room, ain't nobody else but you that that guy's gonna be thinking about. 
That's a teacher. Experience. You had the opportunity for all that great experience. But, but, but it's, it's, it's so logical for all of us in this business to understand that we're following somebody who's doing the same thing we're doing. So how do we change it? How do we change up on them? You know, we're pitching. Oh, you go on in there and pitch. What's the guy throwing? He's throwing, he's throwing fastballs. Well, then let's throw a little fungo at it, man. Let's, let's, let's get, don't, don't, don't throw a fastball. Come in sideways on him. And, 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 and then let's, let's, let's do something else. Change up. Do something that makes the guy be impressed with you. And, and, and understand what, uh, what this business is about. And this business is, is, is about, you know, a, we, we, we look at, at, at a, a, a horrible thing like O.J. Simpson. Whether he's guilty or not guilty. I'm not going to get into but I'm, I'm telling you that what's gone on in, in the publicity department of America mm. is, is staggering. That we're, that my son is, is growing up into uh, uh, when, I, when I look at reality television and, and watch some girl giving birth to an egg, uh, I, I, I mean, what happened to Playhouse 90? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Bert, why you're... Why you mentioned, can we introduce your son to the audience, your son Quentin? I'd, lo I'd love to. Could you stand up for a second and say hi to everybody? <laughs> Let's officially ask Mr. Uh, Dom DeLuisa to stand up for a moment. Uh, Dom, stand up for a moment, yes. Dom, Dom wrote a card here. I've been a friend of Burt Reynolds for a long time. He used to come to my house for dinner. He doesn't call anymore. <laughs> I send over pasta. I send over a pizza. He doesn't return my calls. Mm -hmm. Can you please tell him I said hi? <laughs> we used to be friends. What can I do to get back in his good graces? Sign I, I, love, Dom I DeLuise. Think try to be more intelligent when questions okay. are asked. <laughs> there you go. That's great. Yeah, uh, I don't know if this is on, but I think Bert, you should have a show, uh, and, uh, and 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 talk. I think it would be wonderful because you know you could go on the road, or we could sell these uh, suckers for uh, ten dollars. <laughs> you know, a copy of this is quite wonderful. This is obviously an art. I'll just take a chance to bless the crowd. <laughs> <laughs> but you are a natural uh, uh, storyteller. I don't know why you don't have a show. Well, I think and I we get two tickets. That's the point. You got two tickets. But you, uh, when you did Carson and guest hosted, that opened a lot of people's minds about your great comedy ability. Ch it changed my career. Johnny Carson. And Johnny Carson, when you went through that terrible two years in Florida after the nutcase hit you with the wrong chair, yeah. which set you back a couple of years, it was Carson who called every week. That's a giant, and that's a friend. And when you came on the show, I believe he said, how you got through, he said, well, you know, I've diaried my little black book of all the friends that stayed with me. And you opened the book, and it was empty. I was dying of AIDS. I guess I had a slight case of it. <laughs> because I didn't die. And, uh, I had broken my jaw. I couldn't swallow. I couldn't chew. And so I was down to 120 some pounds. And um, 
Nobody called, nobody came, and uh, I, I, I couldn't get a job for two and a half years. And, uh, it, it, you know, we, we go from up here to down there to up here to down there. And there, there is the greatest award in the world is not the Oscar and not the Emmy and not the Tony. And the greatest Oscar in the, in the world, if you want to call it an Oscar, I call it the Survivor Award. And, and we, we, Not only survived, you came back, won a Golden Globe for Boogie Nights, an Academy nomination. I mean, it's incredible. I mean, you went through two and a half years. I don't know how you did it. You were up to 50 halcyon tablets a day. You went, to go, you went cold turkey. You almost died. We were in coma and you came out of it fully. That is amazing. Well, I, that's, there, I mean, that's, it, it's it, the it, same it, guy who beat Vern in that race, has a will and an intention, an intention to live fully and to be a survivor is extraordinary. You're really an inspiration. Well, I, I, thank you. And, I, and I, I, I look out at all these people and I tell them, they won't believe me, but I'm telling you, you have it in you exactly what I have. And, and, and you, 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 mu you mustn't ever, 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 ever give up. There's a few questions from the people in the audience. John Reiner has a question. Has your work as a director affected how you approach your work as an actor? It makes you so much better an actor, uh, such a better actor. Uh, yes, totally. You, uh, you have to... Uh, be careful because um, when you're thinking as a director, uh, you you may have a guy from don't mean anything bad by this from MTV <laughs> who's directing the movie, and I see him going. Like that, and I say, what, 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 are, what are you doing? And he said, I'm trying to figure out the first shot. And I said, well, maybe point it towards the actors. If you <laughs> Always good. Uh, you, 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 you have to uh, keep your mouth shut. And it's hard to do sometimes. But you, uh, yeah, it makes, you a better, it makes you a better actor, I think. Is Cliff, Cliff Roth here? Cliff is 89 years young, established stunts unlimited in the 60s with Hal Needham, worked on Hooper, Gator, The Fuzz, Rough Cuts, Semi-Tough, Starting Over, The Longest Yard, The End. How long has it been since you've seen Cliff? I'll tell you something about Cliff. We Cliff, can, stand up for a sec. We Cliff can, Young is 89 years young. tell you something about him. I could take him outside, take him up, up, up on the roof, pick him up and say, can I throw you off of here, partner? And what'd you say? Try it. <laughs> I love you too, buddy. I love you too. There, there's a, there's a, uh, a, a spree de corps among Guys that like that, like us, that have done things we shouldn't have done. And, and oh man, do we hurt in the morning. Oh boy, do we hurt. But um, it's, it's like the guys that flew over the hump in the Second World War. Yeah, there's a closeness that... Uh, I, I can't describe to you. It, it's fabulous. And uh, uh, I'm going to tell you one quick story, and then I'm going to stop, because we have to stop. I have to stop. <laughs> well, I'm going to tell you this one quick story, because um, this, is, this is for you, uh, my friend, because of Hal Needham. Hal Needham was the highest paid stunt man in the world. And no one, had a higher threshold of pain 
I've ever met in my life. No one. Never saw him take an aspirin. Never saw him take a buffer. Never saw him take nothing. Uh, he, he broke his neck one time, and he went over and told the ambulance driver that he broke his neck, and the ambulance driver didn't believe him, and, and he beat him up. <laughs> and, and we were we were staying together, and he came in one night, and he was all uh, stove up, you know, like, like this, and I'd never seen him like that. And I said, "What's the matter, Rumi?" He said, "I broke my back." And I said, "Jesus, look back." Well, let's uh, now. You know, a lot of people say that, but I, I, if he said it, I thought maybe he probably did. So they used to have these little drive-in, kind of like drive-in hospital things on Santa Monica Boulevard where you go and have medical attention. And I, I drove into this place and uh, a, a pretty nurse came out. Her name was Barbara. She's really pretty. And, uh, and uh, he, she said, what's the problem? And he said, I think I broke one back. So we go back there with that uh, gown on, and, and I, I could see you kept eyeballing her and everything. And, and I thought, your back's broken, for God's sake. Just <laughs> and, 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 and then this little man came out. He was a doctor, and I could tell right away that the doctor and Barbara had a little thing going, see? And it's not good. So anyway, uh, Hal comes out in this outfit that Cary Grant wouldn't look good in, you know, that stupid thing they tie in. And, and they, they, they put him up and they take the x-rays and he comes running out of there and he said, good God, your back is broken. And I, and I said, I told you that. And he said, well, I, we, we're going to have, you know, we've got to drain, you know, the, the fluid on your lung. We're going to have to drain that right away. I mean, you could die. And how? me and Hal, you know, he's still looking at Barbara, you know, and, and, he, and he says, let's get on with it. Get on with it, partner. Uh, where are you from, Barbara? And, and so the doctor is getting real PO'd, and, and he goes over and he gets a needle. It's that long. It's that long. I don't know if you've ever had your lungs drained, but it, it's not pleasant. And he backs off, and he's going he's gonna to make this stunt guy cry, see? And Hal's looking down at Barbara. And, and I want to know, I want to see a little bit of sweat pop up, or I, I just want him to go, ah! I've never seen him do anything. So I'm up like this looking at his face. And he's like this, you know, and the doctor goes, <laughs> Now, there's this brown, awful, gravy looking stuff <laughs> coming out. It's just awful looking. And Hal never said, Ow? He said, he never said anything. Uh, Barbara uh, had, had, just before he did it, the doctor said, Barbara, you better get down there and hold Mr. Needham's legs because he could faint, you know? So Barbara was down there, she had her hand, and he... <laughs> and as the gravy was coming out, he defecated all over. I mean, all over. And he said, I guess getting your number now would be out of the question. Uh, but don't go anyway. We got a, 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 a gift for you. So, Bert, you just got a new car. And we got a little something for you here, for the new car. Well, oh, that's great. One of a kind. Yeah. One of a kind. Oh. Yeah. 
I know you got a lot of trophies, Bert, but I'd like you to read this. To Buddy Lee. Carmen Battaglia was right. Football's loss was the greatest win for movie, TV, stage fans all over the world. Congratulations, Bert, on becoming a shining star. And this is a bunch of guys that uh, I play ball with and really love. And um, this is terrific, wonderful. Thank you. The one of a kind, Bert Reynolds.